Okay, and we are live. Welcome to episode 70. This is live at Epifan, and I'm here in the Epifan studio here in Ottawa. And joining me today is my lovely colleague, Marta. Marta, great to have you here. Hi. Hello, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Marta. <laughs> Did I face the right way? We were, uh, we're doing a little side-by-side -side here, Ottawa and Palo Alto. So uh, great to have you with us here on the show today. Um, we are Thanks going to... Thanks for having me, Dan. Oh, my pleasure. So we got a great topic today. It's 10 live streaming ideas to grow your brand. And uh, Marta, I know you've been researching this topic in depth. In fact, actually, while we have you on split screen, why don't, I know we just wanted to um, show off the Pearl Mini a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. I could pass it to you. Yes, you please want. do, Dan. Okay, here you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. There you go. It's looking it lovely is. there, Marta. It it's very really lovely. I want it back. All right, there you go. Here you go, Dan. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, we like to goof around here a bit. Um, but yes, of course, Pearl Mini, uh, hot off the press. If you uh, want to learn more about Pearl Mini, go to our website, epifan.com. Uh, this is the latest, greatest live streaming device, uh, portable, uh, very compact, nice big touch screen. So if you haven't heard about Pearl Mini, make sure that you uh, check the link in the video description and you'll find some information on our website. But today, we're not talking about hardware. We're talking about how you can grow your brand using live video. So Marta, you've been looking into this. You, I, In fact, you had a really cool blog post on our website, which I've got here in front of me. Um, so yeah, we're actually right. going to be, I think, probably talking about a lot of the information that's in this blog post. But if you would like to check out the blog post, there is a link in the video description. But maybe you can tell me a bit about how this topic came about, Marta. Uh, yeah, that's right, Dan. Uh, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the ways that brands use live video. Uh, live video is huge for brands right now. Uh, there's a really cool benchmark report. Uh, made by IBM and Brand Live that talks about um, the predictions for 2018. So this, this report is from last year. But it mentions that, uh, so 200 companies were surveyed, and about 95% of them say that live video will be an important part of their marketing mix in 2018. Uh, and also 25 of those, 25%, stated that live video is actually going to be more important than pre-recorded video on demand. So that really says something about how brands feel about live video today, uh, which is why we feel it's really important to show you guys, to show our audience, how live video can be leveraged by brands and how it can help uh, engage more customers, um, basically bring a bigger fan base <laughs> to your brand. And uh, so there are three main kind of main ideas behind what live video can do for your brand. First of all, it helps you grow your audience. The, the more your video is out there, uh, the better. But live video is even better than on-demand video. With live video, you know what's happening right now. You know it's unfiltered. It's very raw. It's a very personal connection. It helps build that trust because it's very transparent. There's no pre-production, you know, I mean, there's no post-production. It's not overly produced. You know what's happening right now. Secondly, it's a great way to communicate with your audience. Uh, so just like any other uh, marketing strategy, like an ad or a banner, live video is a way to, first of all, just communicate you know, on person-to-person -person basis as well as send out your message, uh, your, you know, your, your company message, which, which actually brings me to the third point, which is reinforcing your brand values through live video. So basically today, live video is just like any other uh, marketing material, marketing collateral. Um, but it's, you know, it's much more powerful in the way that it's, that it's live and it's very real. I think, uh... I definitely agree with you, Martin. I think one of the things is, you know, we're so inundated with marketing messages today, whether it's on our phones or on television, of course, or in all the other media forms that we consume. Um, it's kind of refreshing to get that unfiltered, 
perspective, uh, you know, pulling back the curtain, if you will, and, and, and seeing a brand um, in a more authentic format. That's right, absolutely. Um, it's even on our show, uh, you know, lots of, lots of interesting stuff happens, stuff that wasn't scripted, but it makes the viewer feel it's much more relatable. Uh, it, it is refreshing, you're absolutely right. And one of the things that's refreshing about it is it is, un, like we said, unscripted. We even get comments coming in like this one here from George. He's complimenting you on your mustache. <laughs> I'm, I'm not Thank sure George. what that's all about. but It's, uh, uh, it's uh, November in, in July, that's what I call it. Yeah, and we have a lot of people here in chat. We are monitoring chat today, so hello to Rebel State and Stefan. Always good to see you, Harry. Um, Harry has some questions. You know what, Harry? We're going to follow up with you. Um, because you do have some good questions about Webcaster. There is an update to Facebook, so we're going to have more information about that very soon. Um, so without any further ado, let's get it right into it, Marta. Um, let's talk about some ideas for brands. Uh, could This could be for your business, this could be for your company, this could be for your personal brand. Uh, but we do have 10 ideas on how you can use live video to grow your brand. So why don't you kick it off with the first idea, Marta? All right, we'll, we'll switch back and forth. I'll go first. So the sure. first one is uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, we've actually had a few Q&A ses sessions on the Epifan Live page. We've talked about Pearl Mini. Uh, and a Q&A session is, is a great way to, again, build trust with your uh, audience, to be transparent. This kind of springs, uh, the roots of this go back to the Reddit AMAs, if, if any of you are familiar with that. It's the ask me anything. So people like uh, Barack Obama and Keanu Reeves uh, would answer any kind of personal questions on Reddit. And now there's a great opportunity to do it live. So for example, uh, personalities like Rhett and Link on, on YouTube and the twins, the, the dancing twins, uh, they did these kinds of AMAs or Q&As mm -hmm. actually, uh, live and uh, they gathered anywhere from 150,000 to half a million views. Mm -hmm. And for example, the dancing twins, they, they wished a happy birthday to, to a girl live. Can you imagine what, uh, how that made the girl feel? Like she's gonna be their fan forever. It probably made her feel very special. Yeah, so I've, got the, great... I've got the, I'm sorry to interrupt. I've got the late uh, twins uh, Q&A in front of me right now and it's got like, almost half a million views, lots of likes, yeah. lots of shares. It's a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of engagement here on this type of content. Um, I've also seen, um, you know, some, some other business leaders like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, uh, he does this Q and A from his backyard while he's barbecuing. And we've talked about this before, but, um, this is, this is, you know, extremely popular way of communicating your brand message. Um, it allows, you know, uh, a conversation to grow from the content and you get the chance to position yourself as well as an expert, right? Uh, and I, I, it's interesting that you brought up the, uh, the Reddit, ask me anything. I think that um, subreddit has over 18 million subscriptions. So this is a really growing in popularity uh, form of content. For sure. Um, it's, it's great for personalities, for individuals. Uh, but it's also something that can be used by brands to any, to answer any sort of questions that people might have for them live. Okay, excellent. Well, let's keep moving. I've got a, yeah. a an idea to share, and that is to host a webinar. So uh, we actually hosted a webinar here at Epifan a couple weeks ago, and we kind of showed a behind the scenes look at how to um, build a fail proof live streaming studio. So it was a very relevant topic obviously for our audience, but uh, in general offering that kind of in depth um, sort of uh, teaching virtual classroom type of content, what you're doing is you're offering value to your audience. It's an exchange that you get to create um, some value, some learning, some teaching material for your audience, and in return, you get engagement. And that engagement allows you to create a two-way conversation with who could be people who could be, you know, uh, a potential customer in the future, a prospect. So 
based on that interaction that you create, you can sort of learn more about your audience. You can target their interests in the future and you can sort of hone your marketing efforts to the things that are most relevant to them. So that's why I think uh, a webinar is a really great form of, of live content. And uh, there's certainly a lot of tools out there as well to create webinars. We've got, of course, the Pearl Mini, which is an excellent device for webinars. This will allow you to uh, bring in a camera and a laptop presentation using one device and to switch back and forth, do picture in picture, etc. But you could also use something like our AVIO uh, video capture cards and webinar software like uh, uh, Zoom webinar software, for example, is a really good one. So uh, it's, it's, it's getting easier and easier to, we've got the tools now to create webinars very easily. So um, that could be a really interesting way to provide value to your audience and in exchange get, get some more, get to know your audience a little bit better, get to know your most loyal fans and customers a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, Dan. Uh, I actually learned a lot from the webinar that Epifan had uh, a while back and I'm looking forward to, to any future webinars that I'm sure we'll do. Uh, so let's keep things moving. What's the third right. idea, Marta? So the third idea that we have is doing a live product launch. Uh, we all know about the apples of the world who, who launched their products online. There was a huge um, Chevrolet Bolt launch that happened uh, a few years ago. They're huge on Facebook. It was a really large stream. Um, but even if you're a smaller company, doing um, a live launch can be very beneficial. For example, I came across this company who makes workwear, mostly for women, out of, out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called Dovetail. And they okay. did this almost um, very, very cozy uh, kind of live launch. Yeah, there you go. There's, there's our picture-in-picture. Um, picture. Uh, we have the, the brand executives talking about their products we have people who actually make the clothing talk about the material. It's very personal. Uh, you see exactly, exactly what's happening in their company. You can get a feel for their company culture. Uh, and it's a great way to show off your product, obviously. Um, like you, you want, I, I want those gloves now. I don't know what they're <laughs> for, <laughs> but they're awesome. They look like gardening so, gloves or something. But this uh, is cool, yeah, and they've and work. and how they've presented it as well. Not only do they have the video, right. but they've created a multimedia page, right? That has uh, the ability to purchase right on the same page. So you're attracting people in with the video, but you can sort of push them towards the purchasing cycle as well. And look at that! You can see the video on top; it stays on top, and then you can look at all the products on the bottom. That's amazing. Yeah, very cool. The good find with mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. Um, any other, well, here's another example. I mean, we are all familiar with the live product launch of something like a, like an iPhone, and we've got, mm -hmm. we're, we're very familiar with, uh, you know, for instance, uh, Steve Jobs uh, launching products live. But I think one of the cool things about doing your product launch live is it rewards your most loyal audience who is there with you at the live launch. So they get to be, I guess I would call it first to know. And that gives them sort of a, a social currency that they can use, whether they're bloggers or whether they're journalists. It's very valuable to be f first to know and to be the one who gets to spread the message about the new device. So um, again, you're, you're rewarding your audience by uh, allowing them to be there with you at the product launch. And it, it builds hype and it rewards them. For sure. Okay, so let's keep it moving here. Uh, number four that we wanted to talk about is uh, doing a behind the scenes. And uh, we've done that here at Epifan. Uh, we like to go behind the scenes in our studio, but I wanted to share some other examples and um, show some people who are uh, using behind the scenes effectively. I think doing behind the scenes live content is really effective because it humanizes your content. It allows you to offer a peek behind the curtain and to build loyalty by giving your audience an unfiltered view of your operations. So, I wanted to share this. This is actually a friend of mine who does uh, some real estate investment stuff. It's called the McKay Realty Network. And uh, what they do is they create live videos for all of their properties that they're buying and selling and uh, renovating. So uh, uh, this is Sandy. He does live walkthrough. Here's an example where he does live video and they do like a walkthrough of a property 
that they're renovating and they kind of show, you know, this is an unfinished property. This is not something that you typically would want to present on, uh, you know, uh, a real estate uh, channel. But uh, by doing this, it, it allows people to sort of see the, the philosophy that goes into the work they're doing and it allows him to sort of reward his audience and get to see the progress that they're making in um, a, a property renovation. So I thought that was just a really cool sort of peek behind the scenes and it's really neat how they kind of do it mobile as well. It kind of feels like you're invested in the project with them. So um, that's just one you know good example of behind the scenes. Um, another one, uh, this is a friend of Epifan as well and it's uh, called CHRI Radio. And what they do is they get access to a lot of concerts behind the stage, state, behind the scenes, backstage. Uh, so what they do is when they get backstage access at uh, a concert, they go live from backstage. Why not? So they get to sort of bring the audience along and reward them for watching again. And you get to sort of meet the artist, meet the you know the uh, the musicians. Um, in their dressing room and it's really cool because it feels like you're there and you kind of get that unique perspective of what it is to be backstage with you know a, a celebrity or a, a music a musician so just another cool way that going behind the scenes um, can be used to to reward your audience and grow your brand mm -hmm. yeah uh, and if, if this behind the scenes actually teaches you something as well for example, even when you guys were going through your studio, I, I learned so much during uh, during the walkthrough. All right, shall so we move, next move up, on? yeah, number five. We're on uh, right, idea so number we got, five. We got contests. So running contests or trivia games during a live stream is very engaging and very fun. Uh, even here at, at uh, on the live show, I remember you guys were doing all those mean things to the to the capture cards. <laughs> yes, that's uh, true. And they actually worked afterwards. And yeah. we had a contest, and we gave those away, which was just it was a lot of fun. Um, from from the from an, another example uh, that we were able to find was uh, this uh, Canadian company, Canadian uh, retail company called Canadian Tire. Uh, okay. Where they had they had a trivia, and they gathered about five thousand views, but it had two thousand comments. With five thousand views, it had five thousand comments, where people wanted to be the first to answer correctly, uh, and Canadian Tire was giving away prizes. So talk about engagement. Right? Yeah, that's, that's really cool. So many people, and it's a great way to to attract people to your brand. I mean, everyone yeah. loves games. Who who doesn't love free stuff? And you know, when you do contests regularly on your live content, it incentivizes people to come back again, right? Because who knows, it might be an opportunity to win something. And you know, we've given things away on this show and we love doing it, it's fun, but it also, it I think it, again, it, it shows that we care about the people who are watching and it shows that we care about our audience and uh, it's fun to, to offer that kind of thing. Um, I just thought I'd share this. This is a contest platform that we've used. It's called Gleam. And this is a really neat way to sort of uh, gather some data on your contest entries. Um, and just jumping back again to the uh, uh, McKay Real Estate Company that I was pointing out before, they've done some live giveaways um, with their contest as well. So here I think they're giving away, you know, an iPad and some, tic some sports tickets. Um, and they do the draw live. So, you know, Again, this is just a, a, a cool way to show that, or to create some engagement with your audience, and also to reward the viewer for continuing to uh, engage with your content. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so contests, that was number five. We're on to number six now, and that is streaming live events. So, uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, bringing access to people who are unable to attend is something that's uh, really cool. So that's one reason to go live from your events. It also builds credi credibility because it shows how you're engaged within your industry when you're at live events and you stream from them. Um, so in many cases when you're at a live event you're already gonna have cameras there. Why not go live? 
Um, one example of uh, streaming from event, this is us here at uh, in Infocom, and we went live from the show floor, so we're exhibiting at this big show. But we brought the viewers along with us to sort of to tour the show floor. We got all kinds of cool little impromptu interviews with people <laughs> while we were just walking around. And there's Victor with the mic. He's interviewing some robot lady. Um, but this is cool, and it gives an opportunity to um, make the viewer feel like they're there with you at the event. Um, so just another cool way to go live from your event and to uh, sort of capitalize on what you're already doing. Uh, another example of uh, what is that Abraham Lincoln? That is wow, really that's amazing. Crazy. I did not. Yeah, see that. I I did not see that either. That's really cool. Uh, another live event we did recently. This was like a pop up fashion show uh, in San Francisco. Um, again, uh, this is an event that is designed to be a local event supporting like a grassroots organization. But by going live from the event, you reach a much more expanded worldwide audience. So instead of just being an event for, you know, 100 people, uh, the, the, the reach is, you know, tens of thousands of people. So uh, going live from events, you're already going to have cameras at your event. Why not go live? Uh, that's right. It's, it's, a great way to, um, it's a great way to attract attention to, to your brand as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, we are a company who makes hardware for live streaming. Uh, then why not show a, a, a live event uh, if if we already know how to do that? So figuring out what you can what you, you can capitalize on in live stream is is a, is a great idea as well. Okay, right. what's next, Marta? Yeah. Where, what are we up so, to now? Number so seven. Number seven. Number seven okay. is reusing live footage. So for example, if you if you made something that was that was live and it later becomes video on demand, you can then use that material as marketing collateral for uh, basically use it for other purposes or other, for other marketing things that you do. For example, the famous um, the Felix Baumgartner stra stratosphere jump. Yeah. I bet Red Bull uses that all over the place now. That was really cool footage. That was amazing. That was live. Yeah. And now they can use it Anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there it is. Wow. Um, so, for example, even one of our streams, one of our live streams, um, the Live at Epifan show, there it is, um, the software, the streaming software show, that's racking up some views. Look at that, almost 10,000 views. So people are coming on to our web, um, either to our web page or to YouTube and searching for streaming software and they're finding this live show that is now video on demand and uh, you know still bringing value to our customers which is great yeah I think that's definitely one thing to just sort of reiterate is that the live content that you create it's still valuable after the stream ends uh, you can cross post it you can promote it and the cool thing is you know there's no editing required you're not you're not having to spend time uh, creating the video in post-production so once it's live, you know, after the stream ends, you can walk away, you're done, but your content is still valuable. So why not, you know, reshare it, repost it, um, continue to uh, gain value and, and, and allow your audience to watch it after the fact. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can sort of repurpose your live content afterwards. Mm -hmm. So um, let's keep it moving though. Number eight, we're gonna talk about uh, live polls and feedback. So one of the cool things with obviously with live video and we're doing it here, um, you get to interact with your audience live. And we have a comment here, for example, from Stefan. He's talking about how he loves to stream presentations, speeches, um, sometimes like, you know, being able to interact with people like Stefan and everyone else who's here, um, that's really cool. And one of the ways that you can interact beyond just chatting with people is to actually poll them and to ask them questions and to learn more about your audience. So um, one example that we've seen of this is this great platform called ExciteM. And we uh, met the owner of this uh, a while back, but this is like a, a live polling uh, software and it's very easy to bring into your live stream. So with this, you can sort of vote on, in this case, we did a, a live poll on who your favorite actor is, right? It's just something fun, but it creates engagement. 
Um, but you could be asking questions that are more relevant to what you do with your brand. So for example, if you're a shoe company and you're thinking of developing a new shoe, why not ask your audience, what kind of shoe do you want us to develop? What colors do you like? You know, what styles do you want? All of this v information is very valuable. And because people are there watching with you live, um, these are people who are probably many of your most loyal followers. So uh, being able to learn from them and to gain their knowledge is extremely valuable. Uh, I just wanted to share another example. This is a platform called Megaphone TV and they're using it on live television, but could certainly be a part of a live stream. And they will pull the audience on a live show and create a new interactive component. There they are with uh, Conan. Uh, but this is again a way, you know, we hear about technologies known as second screen. This is really cool because it allows it kind of takes passive consumption of content and uh, creates an active component as well. Um, one really easy way to do live polling is with this website. It's called Straw Poll. And you know, you can very easily create a question and get um, answers live simply by providing a link to your viewers. So uh, again, polling is uh, it's a really great way to learn more about your most loyal fans. And um, you know, you're getting an outside perspective, you're challenging your own assumptions, and it's kind of like you can run like a little mini focus group live. So I, I think that's a really cool way to, um, you know, grow your brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I also thought about how you can actually combine some of these ways together. So for example, you can run a contest and also do a polling uh, thing at the same time. So if you have like kind of like a like voice, right? So you have a TV show, you have your own live show, and it's a contest, and at the same time, viewers can vote for it live, uh, taking that engagement factor to a whole new level. Very cool. So, okay, that was number eight. Number nine, yep. Marta, you're up. Okay, so number nine is probably the hardest one, but also my personal favorite, is uh, doing something live that goes viral or that gets media coverage. Now, this, is, this isn't an easy thing to do. This isn't just something that just happens. Um, for example, uh, okay, so Dan put, pulled up this, this video that comes to my mind. This wasn't live, but this, this was kind of premeditated. It's called Pig Rescues Baby Goat. <laughs> so this happened at a zoo where a pig, the hero pig, saved the goat from drowning. However, it wasn't completely real. <laughs> it was created by a show called Nathan For You, where Nathan Fielder provides great advice for, for businesses, how, how brands should grow, in his opinion. So he wanted the zoo to gain more attention, so he kind of fabricated uh, a way for this pig to swim in a certain path and then make it look as if it saves the goat. However, the video had or has 10 million views, so it succeeded. <laughs> That's <laughs> so it really was planned, cool. And it was, and it succeeded. Yeah, I think, I think it's hilarious. Uh, but you don't have to go that far. It could be something, something more simple. For example, uh, April the giraffe at the San Francisco Zoo, who was, who was given birth, that went viral. And obviously, it wasn't like they planned, <laughs> they planned <laughs> for the giraffe to be a star. No, it was just interesting to watch. So kind of think about what kinds of things could be interesting or could potentially go viral. That's like a whole different topic for, <laughs> yeah. for a whole nother show. But if you, if you get that attention, that will definitely draw a lot of people to your brand. And I think you will be given props for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for creating something that's, that's viral. Now here's an example from BuzzFeed. I think this is, uh, was certainly one of the more popular live streams out there. This is they, they one by one placed elastic bands around a watermelon to yeah, sort of see how good. many elastics would go around a watermelon before it explodes. And by, you know, the stream ends up lasting, I think like 20 minutes, well, maybe 40, even no, longer. I think it's, I think it's is it, 40 minutes. Is it yeah. 40 minutes? They end up putting hundreds of, of elastics around this watermelon. But yeah. as, as people started liking and sharing it, uh, the reach of, a, of the video while it was live grew exponentially and it ends up getting like I think something like 800,000 live yeah. viewers yeah. and now the video has over 11 million views and eventually of course the sort of payoff at the end is you know 
the watermelon. Oh, when's uh, it going to happen? Is this uh, it? Uh, oh, oh, one more. <laughs> I think we got to watch the last one till it goes. I mean, you want to watch it, right? Like, how you, can you not? How can you stop watching stop it, right? Watching this. This is amazing. So I, this, I don't this know is the kind. This. this is the kind of content that you know has the potential to go viral oh. and uh, <laughs> makes it a lot of fun to uh, um, you know engage with your audience. Um, so. You know, if you can be creative enough to come up with a concept like that, um, doing it live just adds that immediacy and uh, can obviously have a huge impact on your brand. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, people like Brody Smith uh, and people like, what, what's the show called where they do tricks? Oh, Dude Perfect. Yeah. Those guys do a hundred takes. They do a lot of takes. But knowing that it's live, knowing that it actually happened while you were watching it, that's, that's priceless. Yeah, uh, Stefan has an interesting point here um, that a lot of zoos have live cams for when babies are being born. And this is actually pretty popular uh, type of live content for zoos to market their brands. They put cameras uh, that can see some of the animals and you get to see some really incredible things. Um, I think we were actually, we had a, we have a camera in the Palo yeah. Alto Zoo, right? Yeah, we um, have a and camera it's, and I think we have a pearl there too uh, that are, that's streaming 24-7, yeah. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, again, lots of ways you can go live. Um, we do have a, a, a question. Douglas is asking, um, technical question. Your picture is crystal clear, but Marta's is not nearly as sharp. Why? Well, that's a good question. question. Actually, the reason for that is that we are bringing Marta in. So, uh, we are live. Our, our sort of live streaming station is here in the Ottawa office but we are actually bringing Marta in over a service known as a peer in, which is a, a sort of a, what would you call it? A, a live meeting? Yeah, um, it's a live meeting room. It's a live yeah. meeting room, so it's a web browser. So really all we're doing to bring Marta into this show is we're cropping her out of a, a web browser feed that we have going on here. So um, that's probably why we're sort of uh, limited by the quality of a peer in um, it's you know it's a free service so it works for us uh, but certainly if we wanted to go with something a little more high-end we could have used um, um, you know we've tried Skype it's okay it has its own issues we're having some audio sync issues with Skype but um, you know if you can get a professional grade video calling service you're gonna have obviously a higher quality result than a free service like what we're using but I hope the quality is good enough to uh, um, to, to be watchable for us today um, okay so let's keep it moving we got one more um, tip for creating live content and that is to collaborate with other brands and other influencers so when you collaborate when you bring in other people into your live content, you expand your reach beyond your own audience. You're able to um, uh, get sort of mutual benefit by both brands collaborating and sharing audience with one another. So um, you show that you're kind of engaged within your industry and you demonstrate that you aren't solely focused on yourself, which I think is a good thing and uh, important for brand as well. So we've done that here on the show. I mean, we have done collab episodes. Here we are with uh, PTZ Optics. That was a fun show. I mean, definitely a related uh, uh, a brand that's very related to what we do. So it makes a lot of sense for us to want to reach out to their audience and vice versa. Um, we've also done the same thing here's with uh, Tim Doherty from Wowza. Um, so again, bringing him in as a guest, a related uh, brand to Epifan. So it makes a lot of sense to want to um, access his pre-existing audience and he gets a chance to introduce Wowza to the people who watch the Live at Epifan show. Um, so that's just like a, a, a really cool way of creating that sort of collaboration and expanding your reach as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that is a great way. And influencers are huge right now for live video. We actually have an article about this on our blog as well. It's called Five Live Streaming Lessons from Iconic Brands, How Top Brands Are Using Live Streaming Effectively. And it also shows you the setups uh, that can be used to get that stream going. So for example, we actually have the, the exploding watermelon is, is, is one of those examples. Another one uh, that I really like is from Royal Caribbean, the, the cruises. They had uh, vloggers, travel vloggers, 
completely take over their media channels, so their Facebook Live and their YouTube Live, Periscope. Uh, they streamed for, for nine days for, uh, about how they were on the, on the cruise and the kinds of activities that were, they were doing. And it attracted a lot of viewers. It's very engaging. They actually streamed it in, um, well, not streamed. It was video on demand. It was pre-recorded. But it was on billboards in New York, kind of showing people what they're missing <laughs> by not yeah. being on the screws. That's really cool. Um, to give another example, um, uh, uh, McDonald's actually, and I think we've talked about this one before, but once a year they have their National Fry Day. And uh, here they are, they set up a camera actually just in front of the fryer station at uh, a, a McDonald's location. And all it is is a, an hour long live stream of the fries being made and it created oh, a ton yeah. of engagement. There's thousands of shares, it's got over half a million views. And I think this live video was actually streamed onto, um, you know, big digital screens uh, around the city. So. Uh, just another interesting way to take a live stream. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a complicated, uh, a complicated uh, production. This is just one camera pointed at some fries, but it creates a ton of engagement, and people love that it's live, right? It's the liveness in itself is engaging. So, um, again, just a way that you can use live video, simple live video, to remind people about your brand and to reinforce that sort of brand image that, that you care so much about. Mm -hmm. I literally can't stop watching the fries. I know, it's pretty fun to watch, actually. <laughs> and now I yeah. want some McDonald's fries. Too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done, Dan? Yeah, so after the show, Marta, maybe I can, uh, we'll meet halfway. We'll try to, right. here, take the mini. Uh, thank you, uh, here it is. You're welcome, there you go. All right. So uh, again, uh, that's, that's 10 ideas. Uh, hopefully some of that was useful to you guys. Um, let us know what you think. Um, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, how do you, oh, someone's asking, how do you, f uh, above the dogs media, how do you find all these services like a peer in? Um, you know what, we have uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, very smart people here at Epifan. We're fortunate, but um, you know what, uh, we're going to keep sharing them with you guys. So uh, if you want to keep finding interesting services like a peer in and like excite M and like uh, megaphone TV, we we're talking about all these things today. Um, just stay tuned with our channel because we're out there at events. We're talking to other businesses in the live streaming industry. So uh, we love sharing them with you. And of course, this is a two way communication show. So if there's things that you guys find interesting and you think would be interesting to the rest of the audience, certainly let us know because we'd love to share them with everybody as well. Um, someone's, uh, Stefan is asking, can you put a link in the video conferencing service you are using into the description, please? Um, yeah, I can actually just, I'll go to it right now. It's called appear.in. Uh, very simple in your web browser. Uh, Lisa, maybe we can just show it here. So this is the video conferencing service that we use here at Epifan. We use this for our meeting rooms and, uh, this is a way that we sort of connect our Ottawa office with our Palo Alto office. And the cool thing with this is it's super easy to use. It's all done in a web browser. It's honestly, it's, it's incredibly easy. Um, so if you're interested, just go to appear.in and you'll find out all about it. Um, I think that's probably about it for today. Marta, any final thoughts? Yeah, that's pretty much it, Dan. Uh, be sure to check out our blog articles if you want to learn more about these topics because we do have uh, the recent blogs uh, have been more or less about brands using live streaming. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, here it is. We've got the Epifan blog up here. This this blog is awesome because you know we've uh, there's a lot of great content there. There's a lot of great ideas for your business or for your brand. And uh, we're updating new content on this all the time throughout the month. Um, it's a very visual blog as well. We've got lots of great infographics as well. So, uh, you know, you can download these infographics in high quality if you want to share them in your presentations. Uh, we certainly would invite you to do that. So um, if you haven't, make sure to check out the Epifan blog, epifan.com blog. Make sure to go to epifan.com and check out all the products, including 
the latest greatest. Can I have that Pearl Mini one more time? Yeah, here you go, Dan. There you okay, go. Okay, thank you. So mm -hmm. make sure to check out the Pearl Mini if you haven't yet. It's the best live streaming device, certainly for webinars, but for many of the ideas that we talked about today, this is all you need to get it done. Of course, you need a camera, but um, the Pearl Mini will uh, be a great device for all of your live streaming needs. So do check it out. Um, I think that's where we'll wrap things up today. Marta, it was great having you from Palo Alto on the show today. And uh, high five. <laughs> Did we miss? <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, that was a lot of fun. So we'll see you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And this is live at Epifan signing off. See you guys later. Bye.